What's up guys, Dogpolk here and welcome back to Poker Hands. And today we're gonna be looking at a hand from an absolute god. Mike Possel. God. What the fuck? Oh, is he a god? He knows this guy's a fucking god when it comes to reading. Mikey. God. That's right. Today kicks off a series of poker hands where we're going to look at some hands that Mike Possel played over at Stone's Casino. So let's go ahead and jump into the action. Um, some uh, green leaf lettuce and some feta cheese. Mm -hmm. Not vegan. It wasn't. And uh, it was so good. Oh, man. <laughs> Should bring some next time. <laughs> In a non- wheat tortilla it was a meth our hand begins at 1-3 with a very reasonable $20 straddle under the gun the action folds around to Mike Postle in the hijack who looks down at 5-4 offsuit now this is a hand where almost every winning poker player would fold but Mike does decide to come in for a raise the cutoff Frank Tanks looks down at 7-5 pseudo. This is actually a kind of interesting spot. Uh, I think every once in a while you might be able to mix in making a move here with a 3-bet, but I don't think a call was very good. And the reason is that when you have a very large straddle, essentially that straddle acts as a big blind. And now because the big one's $20 and the small blind or the other blinds combined is only 4 effectively you're getting worse odds here than you would in a normal hand so a little a little piece of uh, advice for you if you see someone with a very large straddle you should play a little bit tighter because there's less money in the pot to win in the pos positions behind as a comparison if this was 10 20 there'd be 10 dollars of the small blind whereas here it's only four and i know that's a small difference but these are the subtleties that might change your strategy it's also a good idea to fold if there's a very high chance that your opponent is cheating Anyway, he does make the call and the action folds to the big blind looks down at pocket threes. This is a spot where you're just going to have to fold your pocket threes. This is a very large call relative to your stack. He's only playing on $470 here. So even though, yes, it's nice when you hit that three, you're really not getting the odds to do so. Uh, you're only going to flop a set something like one in eight, one, nine times, and you're calling off roughly 11 12 percent of the stack here so even if he always doubled up which isn't going to happen when he does flop a set he's still not getting the odds and he's also out of position again also there's a chance someone can see his cards anyway he does decide to call now the straddle looks down at 5-3 offsuit and you know i don't really have to say that he should probably fold here but you know it's actually not the worst thing ever to call uh, i actually like his call a little bit more than some of the other players at the table because his odds are substantially better he's in the straddle and even though that straddle was negative ev he's now getting a much better price in his call and he closes the action but he should still fold because he's got five three offsuit okay we've got four people and we don't have a card over a seven let's go ahead and take a flop nipple so now following with Twitch? your typical everyone's got se seven or below <laughs> thanks meth nipple 10, which 8, gives 10. everyone some type of straight draw. Uh, yes, yeah, so all the players do, in fact, have straight draws here. Except half of them. <laughs> Nobody with the ace here. Four-way to the swap, you're expecting somebody to have an ace here in their yeah. range. But on this swap, which I see so often on the stream... Nobody does, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So how do you really proceed? Because everyone's expecting somebody to show up with an ace or a 10 here. But so usually, everyone's got low cards. That's the power of the betting lead. It's, I, I, didn't, I missed who opened this pot, but it looks like Dave... Dave's not afraid to pull a trigger with even with nothing, but I mean this is a this is a good thing for him to pull a trigger on. He's got he's got his oh gut my shot. God. Wow. <laughs> Mike P not and afraid of course to call. Postle's gonna spike it. <laughs> anyway, the action does fold around to Postle, who should be betting the flop here because it's a spot where he has equity, uh, plenty of aces in his range, and his opponents are gonna have a very wide range of hands that will often fold. But he does decide to go ahead and check. Now the action's over to Frank Tanks in the cutoff who has a kind of reasonable spot to go ahead and take a stab. He does have a backdoor flush draw and maybe the occasional turn gut shot, but all in all, I think he should mainly look to just check this back and look to play later streets. Maybe he improves, he can look to bluff somewhere or perhaps try and show down when he does hit a pair. Anyway, he decides to take a stab, 150 into the pot here, and now the action's over to the straddle with 5-3 offsuit. With a gut shot here to the nuts, there's definitely a lot of options in play, but it's also important to consider the amount of gut shots that there are on this board. There's obviously no open enders. 5-4, five, 5-3, four, five, three, four, three, King, Queen, King, Jack, Queen, Jack are all gut shots. So in spots where the board has many different straight draws, you want to be a little bit more conservative with how you play all of yours because it's a bit more obvious that those are the hands that you can have and so your opponent can counter you if your range contains too many draws. 
I like to approach these spots by mixing it up even more than normal and maybe looking to throw in a disciplined fold with some of my lowest straight draws. This is a pretty reasonable pretty reasonable spot to do so. I would rather be continuing with hands like King Jack, Queen Jack, King Jack because they improve to much stronger pairs and already have more showdown value. If we're going to be playing these really weak 5-3 off too tight hams, well, we're going to have so many different combinations of straight draws. I don't mind folding some of my worst ones, occasionally working in a raise, trying to take the pot down, and then calling with my stronger straight draws more often. Anyway, the straddle decides to make the call, and now it's over to Postle with his straight draw. In this situation, uh, given the stack depth, I really don't mind the check call, but I would really have preferred to go ahead and bet myself. I will say it's a bit dicey to check call when Frank only has $800 behind, so you might need some kind of read that your opponent is weak to be able to float this light out of position, and it also highlights why you should probably be betting the flop yourself. But... If you have an idea your opponent's range could be weak, maybe you can go for the out of position float ski with the five high and a three-way pot to try and take it down on a later street, which Mike does. All right, let's go ahead and take a turn. Not a three on the turn. Oh, no, that's, uh, that's <laughs> definitely not a three. Most likely to, to chop him. It's sick to me that Mike P knows to call him there. Well, he's got to draw RC, to the nuts. tell right? me. <laughs> I mean, how does well, he know, though? Well, he's. I mean, he's looking to hit Jin, yeah, too. He's he, been running yeah, so exactly. good. Yeah, isn't that just so sick that Postle knows to call here? I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, he's been running good. So it's it's got to be that he's running good, right? That It's just, I mean, it's clear, clear. When you're running good, you do these kinds of plays. That's what all winning players do. In fact... People who have some of the sickest win rates of all time, they call in these spots because they've been running hot. It's just classic good poker strategy. So he's, you know, he actually is hoping Dave's got an ace there and he can hit, hit a straight. Or, or really? he can yeah. step on the gas pedal on the turn. Right. Four outs, though, really? But We're because, because, four outs, no, he's not. He's, he's hoping to hit four outs. He is. Or, or I mean, step on the gas pedal on the turn, four, which is what he's still doing. still only at 16%. <laughs> the turn comes at 10, and I think this is actually a fairly reasonable play. This is a board where uh, Mike can certainly have a 10. In fact, if he opened a 10 and then got this flop, he's going to check it a decent amount of the time. And so he can credibly represent a 10 in this situation i actually like this play too i think in situations where the board pairs on a card that's going to help you more than your opponents it can make sense to make some moves but there's an important caveat to this discussion which is the straddling player is still in the pot and he can definitely have a 10 in fact if he called five three offsuit he's going to be calling almost all of his tens pre-flop and those hands are also going to call flop bets so this is a spot where it's a reasonable buffer possible, but he's got to tread lightly because that straddling player can certainly have trips. Dave does decide to make the call and let's take a river. He's <laughs> going to step on the gas pedal here and uh, it doesn't, what happened? Oh, Dave called him. So I mean, my, Dave's also still, so that, I mean, these guys are just going out. This these is guys ridiculous. Are <laughs> so, can so, we just say this isn't poker? Okay, so let's see, this let's see, poker, let's see. Guys. This is poker. ridiculousness. All right, so this, this lead by dave doesn't make any sense right um he just check called apostles bet on the turn right so he doesn't have a 10 then all of a sudden he's emboldened by his hand on the river it doesn't make any sense the river comes the eight of diamonds and this is where dave decides to spring his trap now he should really just be folding the turn he's out of position with a terrible hand but he decided to float and if you're going to float with bad hands you got to have a game plan for how you're going to take this down on later streets and even though i'm not the biggest fan of a lead because it's not very credible and you're often going to want to take the betting lead with tens yourself or look to check raise the turn the point is, if you're going to make some questionable floats, you got to look to put the t your opponent to the test on the river and take it down, which Dave does decide to do by leading out. Over to Postle, this is a situation that is quite weird, but there is something important to note. When you're in a situation where your opponent bets in a spot that doesn't make a lot of sense, you're always allowed to fold your worst hands. In fact, even though this bet is quite small on the river, he still does have his worst possible hand. I mean, maybe he could have 5-3 or 4-3, but the point is still the same. He's got a hand with no good removal. In fact, he blocks some straight draws he'd want his opponent to have. And then additionally, he's got so many other hands in his range he can look to continue or bluff with. As an example of Postle wanting to make a move here, a hand like Queen Jack makes way more sense because he blocks Jack 10 and Queen 10, uh, which are, are going to be hands that are certainly value betting. When you have 5-4, it's kind of unlikely your opponent would play 10-5 offsuit or 10-4 offsuit preflop. It's not impossible, but these are the subtle differences that great players hone in on. What are the actual changes in the overall frequencies based around slight differences in card removal? That's what great poker is all about. Or... What great poker is really about is locking in on your opponent's soul, looking at them deep and knowing exactly what they have. Because if you're able to know 
unequivocally, without doubt, that your opponent does not have a good hand, you can make some moves. And that's exactly what Mike's gonna do right here. So bet on the turn, right? So he doesn't have a 10, then all of a sudden he's emboldened by his hand on the river. It doesn't make any sense. Let's see if Mike puts it together. Oh my what is he doing? God! You guys! Yeah, there you go. He's so there, crazy. Yeah, Mike. And that's just, yeah. The sickest, wow. sickest sickness. Mikey, 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 Mikey. God himself, is he a god? You know, sometimes in poker, you just know. I think this was one of those times. Thank you for joining me here today for Poker Hands, and we'll be back very shortly with another video. I'll see you guys then.